Erica here with your announcement video. Grab your bulletin because inside it is a green sheet. This side is about visitors. If you are visiting our church, go ahead and fill this out and we're going to get some information back to you. And on the next side is our next step. If you have questions about baptism or serving or any other areas of our church, go ahead and fill that out and we're going to get back to you as soon as we can. Today is Baptism Sunday. Yep. Take the plunge at the end of the 10 o'clock service. If you accepted Christ and would like to be baptized, we have shorts. Come on. We have t-shirts. We have undergarments. Undergarments. And towels. Miss Regina Beaver is inviting all of the kids, all of them, to go swimming at our house. September 2nd from 2 to 4. Go ahead and grab your floaties. Grab your goggles and grab your buddy. Semester-based small group classes are going to be starting up pretty soon. If you're interested in leading one of those, get with Pastor John or Ms. Valley A. Sapp. They're starting up in October. We need leaders. Yeah. WMU will be having their annual meeting September 10th at 5.30. The speaker will be Cortland Bieber. She will be talking about her mission trip that she was on. Um, there will be a covered dish, and you're going to find out who your secret prayer guy was. Celebrate Recovery meets every Friday night at 6. Come get rid of all your hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Woo! Amen. Believer's baptism, a defining moment for you as a believer in Christ Jesus. Your baptism was a defining moment. It's like driving a stake in the ground to show the world what Christ has done on the inside of you. That change that has taken place. Do you remember your baptism? Listen, I remember mine years ago. I was six years old when I accepted Christ, and seven I was baptized. Friendship Baptist Church, Upper Pine Prairie, not Pine Prairie, Upper Pine Prairie. We, we differentiate ourselves over there. Some people call us Tanks. It's Tanks Pine Prairie and Tanks Turkey Creek. You had to be a redneck to get that, I guess. But Friendship Baptist Church, I remember on the Wednesday night prior to uh, Brother Hognick, who was the pastor then, he sat down with my brother and myself, and we, he just talked about salvation and, and, and help us understand about what Christ is, you know, is doing in our life. And I remember him because weeks before that, I told my mom, it's like, God is just leading me. God, God is just leading me to give my life to Christ. Mom didn't, mom didn't sit back on that. She kind of let me talk a little bit, but, but then met with the pastor. And then that following Sunday morning, I always heard this. If you just take the first step to Christ, he'll take the rest for you. And I, and I kid you not, I was sitting on the front row uh, on the inside, you know, six-year-old sitting on the front row in church. And actually listening. That was different. But sitting there during invitation time, the pastor was standing here, and I remember taking that first step, and it's like the second step, I took a step up. Then I was wishing I was on the back row because I could have went all the way up, you know. Listen, when God is leading you salvation, it's true. Take the first step. That's that step of faith, and God will lead you the rest of the way. Today, we talk about Baptism Sunday. Listen, if you've given your life to Christ already, you've already professed Him as Lord, but you've never followed through with baptism, that is a command of Christ that we do that. Today is your opportunity. So I didn't bring any clothes, Brother Kevin. Sorry, we have some for you. We have some shorts and T-shirts. We have some undergarments. Yes, male and female undergarments. And they are brand new, fresh out of the package. No second hand with there. Just want to clarify a few things there. We have towels, everything. We try to remove every excuse that you have, can create. Well, I want more family here. They can watch it over and over and over again on YouTube because it'll be there. Listen, all the excuses are gone. Your baptism can be today. Listen, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, today is that day to... to, to Claim your gift that God so freely gives in His Son, Jesus Christ. Let's talk about a few things about baptism. Have your Bibles today turn to the book of Acts. We're veering off of Romans just for a Sunday. Acts 2. Acts chapter 2. Baptism is an act of faith and a powerful testimony to the believer's union with Christ. 
Listen, believers' baptism has always been the accepted practice throughout the New Testament church. Always been the accepted practice throughout the church. Give you a little background on this scripture. The day of Pentecost had arrived, there was 120 people there in the upper room praying for the Holy Spirit to fall upon them as Jesus had commanded there. They'd been there 10 days fellowshipping and praying that tenth day, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Listen, they began to all speak with different languages. What was the purpose in that? What was the purpose in tongues? The purpose in tongues was this. It was, it was a, the feast of the Passover, this Pentecostal feast uh, in Jerusalem. And there were Jews from all different countries, different nations there that spoke different languages. And they were there inside of Jerusalem. So when the Holy Spirit fell, he gave them the gift to speak and to interpret, to understand the tongue. So they went out into the streets and began to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to all of these different nationalities of people. Why? So that when they return home next week, they would go back to their own country and start up the church of Jesus Christ. That's the simple explanation. Well, listen, on this day, Peter stood up, being leader of the disciples. He stood up, and he began to preach. And listen, this boy shucked the corn. This boy picked the cotton. In other words, that's, that's country terms for he's got after it. He preached, and he preached hard. I mean, stomping, snorting, slot, you know, snot going everywhere and slobbering all over the people. This guy was getting after it. get to this part of the sermon we begin reading verse 37 of Acts verse 36 it says therefore let all Israel be assured of this God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Messiah verse 37 says when the people heard this they were cut to their heart and said to Peter and the other apostles brothers what shall we do? So in other words, the Holy Spirit, through this message, began to penetrate to their very core of their being, the, their very soul, and they responded in faith, what shall we do? In verse 38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And with many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Boy, that'll preach right there. Verse 41, those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were baptized and were added to the number of that day. Wow. Let's pray together. Father God, let's, Lord, we are blown away by this message that Peter preached, but God, we're blown away by the move of your Holy Spirit to bring conviction to people's hearts. And Father, that's something that we need so desperately today in revival of Christians and Lord, to see lost people saved is conviction of heart. Lord, we need to see your Holy Spirit move. God, I pray today in every one of the sound of my voice, God, that would just be stirred by your Holy Spirit. Not stirred by anything this preacher says, but God, stirred by your Spirit. Lord, may your Word and your Spirit meet in their heart. And Father, I pray today, maybe there's a lost person here today that needs to give their life to you, follow through with baptism. Maybe there's a person who's already claimed their faith in you, God, but have not taken that step of obedience. Father, I pray today, they will. Maybe there's Christians, God, listening to this and, and really have gotten off track. God, maybe they've gotten uh, backslidden in their own life. God, maybe they've gotten side, sideswiped by something in life that they didn't see coming. And Father, they need to get back with you. Father, I pray today that you move freely by the power that only you can bring. In Jesus' name, amen. There are four realities which compose the meaning of baptism I want to share with you today. The first reality of the meaning of baptism is this. It is the obedience to the command of Christ. We are baptized not because we feel like getting wet and not because there's anything magical in Ville Platte water. Believe me, there's not. 
but we're following through with the command of Christ. See, believer's baptism is a willful act of obedience to the command of Christ, our Savior. We see in Mark 16, verse 15 and 16, but also over in Matthew you can find this. But Mark 16 says it this way. He said to them, meaning Jesus, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Listen, baptism is that act of obedience to Christ. Jesus was baptized, and he commands all of his followers to be baptized. Listen, Jesus didn't need to be baptized, but he came to put the stamp of approval on John the Baptist and all that he was teaching about repentance. And Jesus began his ministry that day, but he set the example for the rest of us to only believe in Christ, but to refuse to be obedient is a direct violation of his command. So we say that we love Jesus, and we say that we're born again, we say that we're a Christian, but listen, if we've never followed through with scriptural baptism, believer's baptism, then we're lying to ourselves because we have not followed through in obedience. How can we say we love Jesus if we don't want to obey him? If we don't want to follow through with what he says to do? Many people choose to, to avoid baptism because they neglect to see the need for this step of obedience. Listen, there are a lot of people who come to church here and, and other churches around. And, and they believe Christ. They have repented of their sin. They place their faith in Christ. But I'm not going to be baptized, Brother Kevin. Why not? My mom will have a heart attack if I'm baptized in that Baptist church. Listen, the water in the Baptist church isn't no different than the water in somewhere else. It, it's, it's not the water. It's your act of obedience. Listen, my mom will never, ever talk me out of following Christ, his command. And in your life... Regardless of what people may think of you, regardless of what your family may do, listen, it's your relationship with Jesus Christ that matters. They'll stand up before Christ on their own account. You will stand up with Christ on your own too. But when Christ sees you, he'll see an obedient child. Here's a thought about those who only believe without action. See, baptism is action. See, James chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. James writes this. He says, show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. <laughs> but the next verse, he says, you believe that there's one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. Just to say that we're, we're born again, that we're, we're a Christ, I believe there's a God, but don't follow through with the actions and be obedience to Christ. Listen, we're no better off, as James says, than what the demons are because the demons actually know that God exists. They were once in his presence as angels. Baptism follows Christ's command and it holds believers to a standard of obedience Talk about hold you to a standard of obedience. Why? Because we all need accountability. And as a born-again believer living in this world, the other, the world looks at Christians a little differently. There's a standard of living that others hold you to. So many people don't want to let others know that they're Christian. Why? Because they want to go out and do and live exactly like they chose, they choose to. And a lot of times that's not godly. But there's a standard of obedience. To willfully avoid baptism places our level of belief on the same plane as the demons. Say our faith must be reinforced by our actions. Believer's baptism is an action of faith. Baptism is an expression or a consequence of conversion. Listen, the early church never negotiated on this. When Peter preached, he preached repentance and baptism. They didn't negotiate on that. Oh, well, you know, I, I can put that off and put it off and put it off and put it off sometime later. No, it was, a, you know what? You have faith. Here's what you do. You have faith in Jesus. Great, let's be baptized. They found water immediately. Baptism is expressing your conversion where others can see. Peter responds to those asking the question of salvation in verse 37. He says, 
When they say, brothers, what shall we do? And they're showing faith. Verse 38, Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Peter emphasized the command of Christ to be baptized. He associated the act of baptism as the confirmation to the act of repentance of sins. He, he, he said, listen, we can't, we can't see that you've repented of your sins, but, but show the world what Christ has done in you by following in obedience. Peter was also very specific. He said, every one of you. So he didn't say just the preachers and just the deacons and just those over there who go to church all the time. He's talking about everyone who claims to be a Christian. Everyone must be obedient to fulfill what Christ commanded. We're all to be obedient to the, in a willful expression of repentance and faith through believers' baptism. See, Peter did not allow baptism to be optional for those who profess faith. faith. It was mandatory. How can we say that we're a Christian but then try to avoid the next step? The very first thing that, that, that Christ wants us to do is to be baptized. And there's, there's no way around it. We can't go 5, 10, 15 years down the road and say, Oh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm saved, I'm born again. Have you ever been baptized? No. Well, Christ commanded that way back here when we were just starting out. Hey, today's the day if that was you. The second reality Meaning of baptism is this. It follows Christ's example to fulfill all righteousness. So when we are baptized, it follows Christ's example to fulfill all righteousness. All the things that Christ told us to do, what God laid before Christ. See, Jesus fulfilled every aspect of righteousness. He was divine and in perfect standing with God. Jesus' baptism confirmed the ministry of John the Baptist. And it set the example for all believers to follow, to fulfill the righteousness of their faith. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 says this, And this, to this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. So Christ set the example when he was baptized by John the Baptist. And then over in Matthew, what we read in Mark a while ago, in Matthew also says, Go into all nations, baptize, make disciples of all men, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he left a command for us to, because when he was baptized, he was fulfilling everything that the Father gave him to do. So now he is giving us that command, Go fulfill everything that I have done. Fulfill all righteousness. Jesus ministered three and a half years to leave us an example of how to be found holy in the presence of God. Baptism is a step in growing in holiness with God. John 13, verse 15, Jesus said, I have set an example for you that you should do as I have done. How can we as Christians even begin to argue with that? And Jesus says, I've given you an example, now follow it. Just follow it. How can we get around that? We can't. Tim, I'm, under, I'm under the strong conviction that if baptism were not very important, then Jesus would not have been baptized, nor would he have commanded everyone to come after him to be baptized. He wouldn't have done it. Think about the idea of righteousness. Righteousness. Jesus concluded that he needed to be baptized to fulfill all righteousness. If Jesus, in his divine existence, wanted his human nature and his divinity to be found righteous, so should we. He wanted all saints and all sinners to look back over his life and say he fulfilled everything God laid out in front of him. Listen, I want my life and I want you to want in your life that whatever Christ laid out in front of you, that you fulfilled all of it. Matthew 3, 15, Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do to fulfill all righteousness. And John considered Listen, when Jesus went to be baptized, John saw him. He knew who he was. When he was coming, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God 
who takes away the sins of the world. And Jesus got in the water, and John wanted to be baptized with Jesus. He says, no, John, I need to be baptized of you so to fulfill all the righteousness. Jesus was concerned about getting everything right. Shouldn't we be, as Christians, concerned about getting it right? Jesus' greatest desire was to please his Father. He wanted to fulfill everything he had to in such a way of, to pave a, a clear way of our salvation. Baptism fulfilled the righteousness for Jesus to provide our salvation clear and confirmed. For our sake, not for his, Jesus was perfect. He didn't need to be baptized. There was nothing in his life that he needed to be baptized for other than following through following through for all righteousness that God laid out in front of him. That's it. Oh, may today that be your desire to fulfill all righteousness as a born-again believer. This third reality of being baptized is this, of, of believer's baptism. It identifies you as a believer with Christ. You see, when nobody can see your faith, they may see your actions. Uh, because your, your faith should inspire your actions to, do, to live a certain way. So baptism is a, is a way of identifying yourself so others can see that you are a Christian. Baptism is an act of obedience whereby the, between the believer is publicly immersed to represent the death, the burial, and, burial and resurrection of Jesus. So when we're immersed in water, there's some things going on there that's very symbolic, very telling about who we are and about what we're doing for Christ. See, believer's baptism is that defining moment, that identification with Christ for those who claim to be in Christ. It is a symbol of the union with our Savior. We see in verse 41, it says, those who accepted this message were baptized. See, when Peter gave the invitation after this message about Jesus. Many accepted the message, and then they were baptized. Their repentance and faith converted them, but their baptism brought clarity to identification for all to see. Baptism identifies believers with the death of Christ. Think about Christ dying on the cross for your sins. The only way that our sins were ever paid for is that Jesus paid for them himself. Because if we had to pay for them, we'd spend eternity in hell. Jesus died on the cross so that our sins would be paid for. We identify with his death when we are baptized. Romans chapter 6 verse 5 tells us, Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. Baptism by immersion is symbolic of the death of Christ. By baptism, we claim the death of Christ for our sin of our sins for our own. Listen, when die, Jesus died on the cross, he gave us a gift, and all we need to do is claim that gift for our own. We just claim what Jesus did on the cross, that salvation that he brings. Listen, I can't die for my sins. If I do, I'm going to hell. But Jesus has already died for them. Listen, Jesus has already died for your sins. Claim that gift for your own. You can't work for it. You can never be good enough for it. Just claim it. It's a gift for your own. Jesus was the only one acceptable to God for the payment of my sin and for your sin. In baptism, we're united with Christ in his death. Baptism also identifies believers with the burial of Jesus Christ. You think about baptism, we baptize by immersion. No sprinkling going on here. We baptize by immersion. Because we want others to see that we identify with the death of Christ, but also his burial. We see in Romans chapter 6, verse 4, it says, When we were baptized, we died and were buried with Christ. We were baptized so that we would live a new life as Christ was raised to life by the glory of God the Father. Our baptism takes on the symbol of Jesus' burial. The image of the sinful nature that we once lived is now buried with Christ through baptism. Oh, listen, baptism stands for, for you being buried with Christ. It means that we accept what Jesus did on our behalf and his burial in the grave 
not to stay there. But it means that we have died to our old self and now we are buried with Christ. The third aspect we see in identification is the resurrection of Christ. A lot of part of verse 4 says, And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Baptism gives us the symbolism of the resurrection of Christ because, because of this symbolic factor is the assurance that just as Jesus was resurrected from the dead, so will everyone else who's accepted him as Christ. So he was buried, and in baptism we see that we are resurrected with Christ. It's a symbol to show everybody else that we claim what Jesus did, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. But it's also hope for us to understand and to know that when Jesus comes back, those old dead bodies that are, are left in the grave, when Jesus comes back, he brings our souls and those old dead bodies are now resurrected to a new body in Christ. We'll have a body just like Jesus. And we can eat all the chocolate cake we want, and it won't show. We can have two pounds of boudin, and it won't show. Perfect in every aspect. We, we identify with Christ through baptism. We claim all of what Jesus has done for ourselves. And the fourth reality about baptism is this. We associate with the church. Baptism identifies us with the church. Not First Baptist Church, Ville Platte, but the church as a whole. From the time that it began to the time when Christ comes back. Every tongue, every nation, every generation, every time identifies us with the church of Jesus Christ. See, believers' baptism identifies and associates those who have trusted Jesus as our Savior. We see in verse 41, those who accepted the message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000. The message of Christ went out, and the Holy Spirit brought the harvest. See, in this early church, this account, this defining moment in church membership came with the baptism of converts. Baptism unifies the church. It's a unifying act that bonds the church of Jesus Christ together, regardless of what denomination or non-denomination you want to call yourself. You are born again in Christ Jesus. We're unified together as a church. By believers' baptism, we claim to the public that we are followers of Christ and that we are members of Christ's church. Note, baptism does not save anyone. I want you to understand, baptism does not save anyone. There's not, there's not enough magical powers in Ville Platte or Pine Prairie water or Turkey Creek water or whatever water you go with. <coughs> baptism is an act of obedience. You see, it doesn't save anyone, but it is mandatory for those who are saved. Listen, I, a seminary professor, we're sitting in class, and the professor, he pulls his glasses down like this, and I love this guy. Sh folds his shoulders up like this. He says, I have a question for you guys. So, okay, what is it? Is baptism necessary? No. <laughs> This is seminary. This is pastors and youth pastors. Because that question can be interpreted a couple of different ways. Of course, the answers came out, you know. Uh, is baptism necessary? As good Southern Baptists, we were like, well, it's not necessary for salvation, but it is necessary for obedience. I want you to get your mind wrapped around that. The thief on the cross died without ever being baptized. But if he had the opportunity to come down off the cross, that would have been the first thing he wanted to do as a follower of Christ. 
You see, as a follower of Christ, it is necessary that we follow the command that Jesus had given to us and that is common practice throughout all of the New Testament. See, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 says, For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body. Are you a part of the church, the body of Christ? Have you followed through with biblical, scriptural baptism? Listen, I know there are some here, maybe many here. Maybe you were, you were christened as a child. Different churches do that. Catholic Church, uh, Methodist Church, Presbyterian Church, Lutheran Church, Episcopalian Church, different ones. I want you to understand something that's different than believer's baptism. The New Testament only teaches believer's baptism. Infant baptism, infant christening is this. It is the parents or the godparents or grandparents, whoever it may be, committing to Christ, committing to God to raise this child to know about Christ and to know about the church, the particular church that they attend. It is the commitment of the parents not the commitment of that child. That child does not have the ability to willfully, by faith, accept Jesus Christ. So that baptism, although it may have been a good thing for parents to commit to raise them, that child at some point growing up still has to come to a point of, of salvation, of accepting Christ for themselves. And then following through with believer's baptism. That's very important for us to see. Because if that child never does, that child may grow up to be an atheist. That child may grow up to be agnostic. That child may grow up and end up on death row for thing for a whole life. You see, that child has to grow up and make a commitment to Christ. Right. Infant baptism is not taught and preached in the New Testament. It's not there. It's not there. But baptism, believer's baptism, is taught throughout the New Testament. So as we're talking about baptism, and you may be sitting here and say, I'm a, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, and, 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 and you know I have faith in Christ, and, and you may have not been followed through with baptism and you're 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 looking at being baptized as a child that 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 well that's all i needed well no that was something your parents did for you not you this is you saying i accept christ i accept his death burial and resurrection as my own i claim it in the name of jesus as my his gift to me i claim it you see that's what the New Testament teaches. That's what the early church taught. That's what we as Christians must teach and understand. That that's how important believer's baptism is. It may go against what you were taught all your life, but we want to stand on God's Word. And we want to make sure God's Word is very clear to us and helping us grow in our faith so that when we say yes to Jesus we understand that we are now a disciple of his and the first thing as a disciple I need to do is obey my master obey my savior obey my teacher and Jesus said be baptized what about you today maybe you're here this morning and You've given your life to Christ a long time ago. Maybe you've, you've committed your life to Christ and you've never followed through with baptism for whatever reason. Got sidetracked. Didn't go back to that church that you gave your life to Christ. You just kind of got sidetracked. Today's a great day to do it. Great day to follow through. We, we've, we've taken the excuses out. We're here. We're here to support you and celebrate with you. Maybe, Christian, you, you've, you've been walking with God. And just talking about baptism has opened your eyes to some new things in your, that you realize that 
you haven't been where God really wants you to be. You know there's some things going on that, that God doesn't want in your life and he wants you just to move them on out so that you can get back to the very basics of living for Christ. You know what I've learned? And listen, God has really taught me something. You never get too old to learn from Christ. Never, ever, ever. You know what happens to us so often? Is we get involved in something that we shouldn't. Maybe there's old, you know, old habit that we, old sinful. You know what we do? We, we go to God and we ask forgiveness. And oftentimes we have this attitude. God, help me to try to do better. You know what we've done? We've taken God out of the mix of it. We, we just told God, God, I'll do better next time. I really don't need you. I just need your forgiveness. God has really shown me something. Why don't we just submit ourselves to him? When we go and ask God for forgiveness, won't we just admit that we really are powerless to change? We really just don't have it in us to do anything different than keep repeating our same old bad habit. We just keep going back to do it. And we want to go back to God in and, and shame because we keep re repenting for the same old thing over and over and over and over again that we just finally submit ourselves. God, I can't really do this. And God, I'm sorry for, that, for even trying to break that old habit. God, I'm sorry for getting involved in all that garbage again. God, I'm powerless. Lord, I submit myself to you today. Your word says submit yourself, submit ourselves to you, reject, reject resist, the, resist Satan, and he'll flee from us. God, today I pray that as I submit myself to you, that you will empower me with your Holy Spirit so that I can just be. I can just live the way you want me to live. Empowered by your spirit, but not empowered by Kevin West. Not empowered by you, insert your name in there. Christian, we're trying too hard to be good when we just need to realize that we can't do it in our own strength. Amen. Quit trying to tell God you'll do better next time and just say, God, I can't do it. And maybe you're here this morning and you've never asked Christ to be your Savior. You realize that there's something missing in your life. You realize that if you die today, heaven would not be your home. Or there's a big question mark because you're really not sure. Today's the day to get it right. Today's the day that you can walk out of here and you can, you can understand fully that, that, that verse, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. I write these things to you who believe in the name of Jesus Christ so that you may know that you have eternal life. Just take the guessing game out of it. Jesus saves you. You don't save yourself. Maybe today you've just come to a point and the Holy Spirit has led you that you need Christ to be your Savior You've done the church thing, and you realize that's not where it's at. Today's the day you accept Christ as your Savior. I want to lead you in a prayer. Listen, this prayer doesn't save you, but your faith reaching out to Christ to accept his gift of salvation. While you're reaching out, you're giving him your sin. He already knows your sin. You're just agreeing with him that those things are wrong. I'll lead you in that prayer. And then we're going to stand up in just a moment. We're going to have, a, we're going to have a, a song of invitation. When you say that prayer, I want you just to go through that back door right there. there there's Pastor Brian and them are waiting back there for you. We have a whole group of people just to lead you. If you want to follow through with baptism this morning, listen, we have everything waiting for you. Your clothes, you'll leave, your hair may be wet, but your clothes will be dry. Let me pray for you. If you need Jesus this morning, would you just open your heart up and invite him in? Maybe you'll say a prayer like this. Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I can't save myself. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins on an old cross 
And he was buried and resurrected. And I claim his gift of salvation for myself. God, would you please come live in my life? Fill me with your Holy Spirit today. I am your disciple. I will walk with you for the rest of my life. Give me strength each day, God, just to submit myself over to you. I want to be obedient today in baptism. I want to follow you. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for taking me to heaven when I die. For it's in your son, Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer this morning...